It's the foliage season here in Arizona. It's the most fabulous season for the trees here. Have you ever got a chance to see those colorful maple or oak trees in northern Arizona? Or those not so colorful Palo Verde trees here? <laughs> <laughs> what do the leaves on the tree look like? Are there two identical leaves on the same tree? This question has puzzled metaphysicists and we biologists for a long time. Different leaves on the same tree share almost the same genetic information, but they locate differently, display different colors and shapes, form different textures, and respond differently to seasonal changes, that is, to stay on or fall off the tree. When we take a snapshot of the trees in low resolution, the complexity of individual leaves will be blurred. It is almost impossible to differentiate individual leaves since they are averaged out. As we take a closer look at the trees by increasing the resolution, we'll probably see subpopulation of the leaves and gradually see their colors, shapes, textures, and distinguish single leaf from each other among hundreds of thousands of them. Just like leaves on a tree, cells in a multicellular organism are not identical. Even within the same tissue, genetically similar cells do not necessarily behave alike. Some divide, um, divide rapidly, while others slowly. Some thrive or survive under stress, some others die. The cell-to-cell -cell difference, or we call it cellular heterogeneity, is an inherent feature of cell population. In some cases, this heterogeneity can be dramatic, such that a subpopulation, let's say the darkest ones, might dominate the population behavior and becoming the driving force of a disease like cancer. However, traditional biology research is set at the population level. It depends on using large numbers of cells and averaging the measure parameters. We could consider the color transition here from light to dark represent normal to cancerous states. Single cell analysis will help us to report a distribution of colors like light yellow, light green, olive green, or dark green, and identify those important subpopulations closely related to cancer initiation or progression. However, the traditional biology population research is like a blender. It usually reports a average or intermediate value, let's say green, and cover up the presence of other step populations that might be functionally important. Therefore, single cell analysis enables us to understand the differences more precisely and find out better diagnosis, diagnosis and therapeutic methods for diseases like cancer. No cells are created equal and no cell is an island. Previously, our view towards cancer is like um, nothing other than cancer cells talking to themselves in endless monologues. Instead, in the cancer tissue, in addition to cancer cells at different stages of progression, there are eight or more types of cells. Precancers and cancer cells are in continuous communication with their non-cancerous neighbors, just like what police, gangsters, gangster companions, and citizens do in a society. Cancer stem cells give rise to multiple cell types. Cancer-associated normal cells work coordinately to form structural framework for the tumor growth. Cells forming the blood vessels support the humor, tumor growth by supplying oxygen and nutrients. And a, vari a variety of immune cells are also found 
in the tumor cell society. Are they all loyal soldiers guarding our body? No. Some of them can induce the death of tumor cells, but some others might be kidnapped by cancer cells, and they are actually feeding the growth of tumor. Under some circumstances, those most aggressive ones, the dark green ones, is very likely to invade the normal tissue and grow in other parts of the body, which become secondary or metastatic tumor, just like gangsters committing multi-country crimes. So cell-cell differences or their communication signals are used by each cell type to encourage or limit the growth of other cells in this society. Then we might want to ask, in this tumor tissue society, how is the cell-to-cell -cell difference? And how do cancer cells talk to their non-cancerous neighbors? First of all, we might wonder, what is the population density of cells in this tumor tissue society? Guess. How many cells are there in the tissue size of one cubic centimeter, which is about the size of a peanut? One to 10 billion cells. Billion starting with a B. <laughs> so it is really hard to imagine how many differences are there between individual cells and how many interactions are taking place here. In our Center for Biosignatures Discovery Automation in the Biodesign Institute, we have developed a set of advanced technologies, including loading these teeny tiny single cells into micro wells, measuring cellular phenotypes like how cells consume oxygen, and harvesting single cells from these micro wells, as well as single cell whole transcriptome analysis, which studies the whole set of RNA from a single cell. Using these technologies, we are able to study the genetic alterations as a result of cell-cell interactions at the single cell level. Here, we could consider um, happy cells, indifferent cells, and unhappy cells represent normal cancerous and can um, normal, normal precancerous and cancer cells. So in our lab, we are looking into how happy, indifferent, and unhappy cells talking to their peers. We also put happy and unhappy cells together. Uh, we are placing one happy cell into a group of unhappy cells and see what will happen, and vice versa. So we could envisage several scenarios. Happy cells might provide a shelter for those unhappy gangsters and actually serve their growth. And unhappy cells might inhibit the growth of happy cells, or unhappy cells will um, escape from the guard of happy cells. Understanding the mechanisms of these scenarios will help us develop better cancer therapies. Given that cancer cells are dependent on their nearby microenvironment for their growth. Maybe we can attack the cells that form the supporting network for the tumor growth, interrupt the dialogue or signaling between them, and ultimately inhibit the growth of tumor. Thank you.